I feel like Jesse's with me all the time, but this is where I come to visit Jesse. I'd hear myself saying it, and I'd say, that can't be the reality of it. Jesse was shot in the forehead in his first grade classroom. Like that's, but it must be because you're saying it and people are listening. It's like so incredibly unbelievable. They're so little, those little tiny bodies, you know, and you think about them riddled with bullet holes. It's like unimaginable. It happens all the time, these mass shootings. And that's not the society that you want to live in. It's not the society that I want to live in. But who, who's going to change that? It has to be us. I came to forgiveness. It was, it was a process. It started with a choice, and then it became a process. Oh, I remember everything about that morning. It started out like any other morning. Um, I'm a single mom, so I was at home getting both my boys ready. And I turned around to give him a hug goodbye, and I noticed that he had write, written in the frost with his little fingernail, I love you, on the side of my car, and he'd drawn hearts. And I gave him a hug and, uh, and took a final picture, actually the last picture ever taken of Jesse, uh, standing by his goodbye message to me, really is what it was, and then gave him a kiss and sent him off. So I went to work and was at work for maybe an hour when I had an instant message from one of the employees that was working from home, and she said, there's been a shooting in Newtown. Good evening, breaking news. I'm Ashley Banfield in Newtown, Connecticut. It is the scene of one of the worst school shootings in the history of the United States. I did start to get scared when I drove to the school. There were first responders from the entire state. There were military helicopters. There were army jeeps. Um, men dressed in fatigues and everybody was milling around and I did start to panic um, looking for Jesse, uh, getting there kind of at the tail end when the parents were all reuniting with their little ones and so I'm watching relieved parents walk off with their kids but I'm not seeing my little brown head. The police officer would come up and say, do you have a recent picture of Jesse? Do you remember what he was wearing? And all those little things kind of added up to the point that when a person actually came up to me, knelt down and said, there's no easy way to say this, your son's dead. I already knew that he was dead. As a mother that's lost a child, it doesn't matter how, it's just an aching void that you will have for the rest of your life. And, and I think that it will always be like that, and that's okay. Hi, my name is Scarlett Lewis. I'm the founder of the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement. So I've had a lot of attention for my decision to forgive Adam Lanza, the man who shot Jesse. I knew instinctively, kind of right off the bat, that somebody that could have done something so heinous um, must have been in a tremendous amount of pain. And I learned little things from people that actually went to school with Adam, um, that he actually was in a tremendous amount of pain. And that helped me have compassion for him as a human being. I found a message that Jesse wrote on our kitchen chalkboard shortly before he died. He wrote three words, nurturing, healing, love. The minute I saw those three words, I knew that if Adam Lanza had been able to give and receive nurturing, healing love, that the tragedy would never have happened. Hi. I started the Choose Love Foundation because I wanted to turn the tragedy into something that makes the world a better place. And I knew when I saw that message of nurturing, healing, love that I needed to get that message into schools. So I um, teamed up with a doctoral professor, Dr. Chris Cook, a group of dedicated educators, child psychologists to write this program to make sure that every child has access to social emotional learning. Our program is totally free and the educator learns right alongside the student. Social emotional learning, it's helping kids learn about self-awareness, basically what their emotions mean to them, right? And how they handle their emotions, right? So it not only gives them an awareness of what they're feeling, but also how to manage those feelings. Other part of social emotional learning is this awareness of how other people are feeling. 
and thinking about it and interpreting that. Does anyone know what the word gratitude means? That's a big word for second grade. What does it kind of sound like? Something cool? It does sound like something cool, I agree. Grateful? The neuroscience of compassion is really well researched. When people think in a compassionate way, we all release a peptide hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin then releases two neurotransmitters in our brains called dopamine and serotonin. Dopamine makes us feel high. Serotonin is a calming level, is a calming neurotransmitter. And so think about it. You're feeling good and you're calm. And it all started by thinking compassionately. Can anyone show me how we did our brave breaths? Go ahead, Rain. What do we do? I say that social emotional learning would have saved Jesse's life. If you have a better solution, raise your hand and I will get behind it because I want to be part of the solution, but no one ever has. So until then, I have dedicated my life to spreading awareness of social emotional learning. If we took responsibility because we live in this world and we became part of the solution, we could fix it. We have to fix it. No one else is gonna step up for us and do it. We know that now, right? <laughs> we have to do it.